Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep and welcome back to the Butcher Circus. So today we might not be play we might not be playing against Mr. D, but we have a team that only Mr. D plays. So we are actually giving his uh, idea a try and we're gonna see if we can make it work. So we're playing against a veteran player called Waha Wachache. I <laughs> I can't pronounce that too well. I think that's Spanish, it might not be. But uh, the team we have here is something very, very interesting. So this is something I've only seen Mr. D play, and it actually make use, uh, makes use of the Suffer with this flagell, so it's a pretty funny thing. Now, I did uh, pull that Plague Doctor because we kind of have to take her out early because of the Plague Grenade. Very interesting trinkets on the Plague Doctor, by the way, but I don't think it should uh, make too much of a difference. I can have a 90% hit chance. I don't think that's really necessary to go for immediately. I think what I want to go for right now might be actually just a Hound's Rush. It might fail, but it could also get a crit and uh, do a lot of damage. It didn't crit, but it definitely did a lot of damage to the Plague Doctor. Now she's not feeling all that great. She's gonna act, which is gonna put her in a lot of danger because you just lost your only healing character and I get to go first next round. Misses both Plague Grenades somehow. Yeah, that's what you get for only bringing plus 4 accuracy. Yeah, that's, that's rough. That's definitely very rough. I could go for a sniper shot first, but it would be a 90% hit chance, so we just click here and you go for a punish on the grave robber. I don't want to punish the flagellant particularly because he has gauntlet of absolution, like it won't really do me any good. And uh, punishing the grave robber is actually doable because this flagellant does have the crown of thorns, so you are not too reliant on accuracy buffs to make that work. So there's going to be a puncture, it does actually get the pull, so that's going to make things a little bit more difficult for me. I'm going to move back here, and uh, actually in hindsight, knowing that a puncture could have happened, maybe going for the 90 would have been a smarter play. But, oh well. There's going to be a punish on my flagellant. I don't think this is a... Um, this is like a winning set of plays for for Mr. D. Uh, I mean, not Mr. D for Wachache. I really don't think this is a winning set of plays. Like focusing down my flagellant just means I'm going to make use of the content of Absolution of Crown of Thorns and uh, put a, pull out a lot of pain. So I can go for a sniper shot first. If you heal, I go Hound's Rush and then we take it from there, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's going to be what we what we go for here. So I'm going to go sniper shot to get a 30 out of it. Cool roll. Not quite a one shot if she actually still had the 31 HP. But it's way more than enough for, for what we actually wanted. So yeah, this team, you just have an Arbalist with the usual setup, like stabilizing Taylor and the Piercing Quarrel, so a lot of damage there. You have a Houndmaster which can guard and, uh, and mark, so both of them are very, very valuable, and he also has the Hound's Rush. And the two Dodge Trinkets with the Guard Dog, you become quite difficult to hit, so it's... Uh, it's pretty fun of, a, of an idea to try out. I could go Caltrips here, which I think is an idea, but if I fail it, uh, if I fail it's going to be a little harder to get a death blow for sure. Hmm. 50 50. Are we greedy? I don't think we're greedy. We're going to go for a come hitter here. We're going to pull that Plague Doctor, get her to position 2. If you only go Puncture, then so be it. I don't really mind all that much, it's not doing any particular amounts of damage to my team, and the amount of damage that it does do is gonna get negated by my flash while actually, you know, just doing whatever he wants. So there's gonna be an incision here, that's a crit, not quite enough to drop me to the store, so we're gonna we're not gonna click him just yet. And now we're gonna go for a death blow with the Hound's Rush. It's a 40, but we do take it. I think it is justified to go for a Hound's Rush here rather than to wait for the star next round and go for um a kill with to finish him, because I don't think my Hound Master could really do anything else of intrinsic value here. I mean, I could mark, I could guard which wouldn't do anything, because, you know, puncture. I'm actually gonna get exposed here with this uh, Hound Master. Oh, is there a big panic darts coming? I think there is. Oh, there, there comes my HP again. And um, normally I say redeems before exsanguinates, but this is, a, this is a tempo move, so we're gonna go for the exsanguinate and start uh, exhausting that flagellant's healing. So it's not too difficult to deal with stress teams when you actually have a flagellant with Call of Absolution. So this is a, a big upside for, for this team. It doesn't have any accuracy buffs at all, like doesn't have any chances of doing that, but it has really decent accuracy. Apart from the Houndmaster Sounds Rush, which is, you know, not any good accuracy at all, uh, the flagellant has a Crown of Thorns, which is enough to make him hit most things reliably. The Bounty Hunter has Grappling Mid's Finisher, and the Arbol has really decent base accuracy, and she can also wait to go last and get the extra 12. So, yeah, the team looks nice. It definitely looks nice. I think the play here is actually going to be to go for a lunge on me. Maybe, maybe the play is going to be something like that. 
Now I have to mark someone sometimes, so I'm gonna mark this shield breaker here. If she had any prod, now it would be gone, but we actually failed the debuff. So one amazing, amazing thing about the Houndmaster mark, and it's something a lot of people don't realize, is that it actually debuffs prod, and it has a 120% chance of debuffing that prod. Filling that right there, like filling that that pole just means that my opponent's in a lot of danger. I'm gonna have to say that, because now we're gonna go for a sniper shot. You know, 90% hit chance, sometimes you have to go for those, I can't really afford to, you know, click the Bounty Hunter now and basically, like, you know, drop a Caltrips for no reason. You just have to, to go for the Tempo move, 90% hit chance, sometimes you have to take them. So the Flash here is gonna drop to 5 HP, he's gonna go for a Punish, if I weren't dazed... Uh, the flagellant would be dead right now, I could just go for a finish him on the flagellant and it would be GG. But since he is dazed, well, we're gonna have to go for a finish him here and take it from there. So, yeah, I would... Uh, actually, who would go first next round? Yeah, I would have to go for a punish, but then the flagellant could act and, yeah, no, nothing too great would happen. So I have 26 bleed on me right now. <laughs> It's just, the, the flange doesn't care, you know, you just drop the death star, you just heal again, you pull out, you push out a lot of damage when you heal, you are, you're immune to stress, like, this team is solid, it is solid, it is able to deal with a lot of things, it has a lot and it's, uh, a lot of advantages. You have suffer with the flash on too, which means that if someone tries to mark your other characters, you just go suffer and remove it, which is pretty fun. It's gonna be a lunge for 30 damage. I was expecting a lunge on the Houndmaster because the crit chance would be pretty cool to see. Now I'm just gonna drop a redeem here. No point of going exsanguinate and missing the grave robber, and also no point of going exsanguinate on the flash on and he's already dropping down to zero. I mean, I could have done it just to make the flash on to have to go first, but I think just dropping a redeem here, keeping the bounty hunter alive is great. So one big flaw that this team does have is that the bounty hunter, um, once once the bounty hunter actually dies, he's gonna have a really bad time. This team is gonna have a horrible time because it only has one finisher character and uh, the others can't really do all that well without the, without the BH. You definitely need the BH if you wanna take Ws. But what you do in that uh, in that situation is you can guard him, you can heal him. If he gets marked, you can go suffer, you can go suffer to remove the OT. You have a lot of ways of protecting this bounty hunter, which, uh, you know, just is nice. It's definitely very nice. I'm going to go for a heal here. You know, just keep it simple. Clear those bleeds, make the flash on, go out of their storage so there isn't just a surprise pick to the face death blow. And honestly, I have more actions than you right now, so I can't really complain too much. I'm thinking of... Um, I was kind of thinking of Target Whistle. Uh, I could go for Mark on the Flagellant and then and then go for Hound's Rush. I think that might be an idea. Yeah, I was thinking of, you know, having um, <laughs> the Target Whistle and then the Collect Bounty, but I do not have Collect Bounty. Actually, the debuff fails, which is pretty annoying. But we're gonna go for this, 13 to 25. Sadly, we get the min roll. Yeah, the Houndmaster isn't the greatest damage dealer, but you know, he's an okay-ish damage dealer. I'm gonna go for a Punish right there. Doesn't do enough. Yeah, we should do way more damage than what we're actually doing, but uh, thankfully the Flange on this days, but I don't think it's gonna make a difference, because now there's gonna be a Grave Robber action. I won't have time to actually hit before, um, and then get to finish him, because then the Flange on's gonna act. So yeah, not, not the greatest outcome right now. But it doesn't matter all that much. I think we can still kill the Flagellant easily, and then with all the characters that we have here, we should be a okay. Because, you know, this team, like, Hanmas is probably gonna dodge a lot of uh, stress abilities and all that. You know, the BH is gonna stay safe. The Arbalist is relatively difficult to get to. Oh, that's a crit launch for 48. Sadly, it doesn't mean anything. I get to, to just go for a heal here, and, uh, you know, it didn't do anything. I do get a crit out of it for 14, but. Very unnecessary crits. Our favorite, right? Definitely our favorite. So Flagellant's gonna act. He's only gonna heal for 15, uh, because he has minus healing skills. He might heal for more than that, but oh well. Yeah, Crown of Thorns. Speaking about the Crown of Thorns, when do you, when should you pick this trinket? Because you don't see me running it very often. You see me running it um, basically only on this team, I think. And this is the first time I'm playing the team too. Oh, he gets a crit heal for 30. That's so... Un that's so unnecessary. This is gonna this is gonna prolong the match. Well, at least it's gonna let me explain Crown of Thorns. So you get 15 accuracy out of it. Of course that the Flagellant loves all oh, nice grid. Of course that the Flagellant loves accuracy because Exsanguinate has 85 base. Reign of Sorrows only has 95. Like any accuracy you can get is awesome. Once you do drop to this, so you get an extra five. So he, he definitely appreciates that. But overall, you cannot bring Flagellant without having a single accuracy buff. 
So how do you negate that uh, lack of uh, lack of accuracy for the flash? Well, you have two ways. Are you give him accuracy trinkets or I could go for a heal here, but it's not necessary. I'll go for punish. You could go for accuracy trinkets or you can have a jester to drop battle ballot or you can have a man arms to drop command. If you're crazy, you can also have a musketeer to drop ranging shot, but that's only 10 accuracy. So I don't, I don't see that as like a real big buff to, to accuracy. So since you do need buffs, and since you have a team without any buffs, if you are trying to put Flagellant in a team that doesn't have a Man at Arms or doesn't have a Jester, then you should definitely take Crown of Thorns because it gives you 15 accuracy. It's the most amount of accuracy out of any trinket in the Butcher's Circus, uh, apart from the Finisher, that one gives you 20. So yeah, it's definitely worth taking. It has some downsides, like, you know, you bleed yourself, which is both good and bad. Bleeding yourself can be good because you actually have a chance of um, using your healing ability sooner because sometimes what your opponents can do is they just ignore the flagellant and then you basically won't be able to use exsanguinate and redeem until you're the last character alive. Of course if you have suffer you can kind of negate that if they have any sort of DOT you can just eat it all up and uh, take it for yourself so hopefully you can put that to work but the plus 15% damage you take with crown of thorns basically negates your gauntlet of absolution prot buff so do watch out for that, because this trinket makes the flagellant a lot easier to finale. Definitely a lot easier. So now we're going to go against the novice player. This is just going to be a quick match, so I, I'll, I'll have a look at what they have. Sometimes novices can, can have some really good stuff, but I'm unsure if that will be the case. So yeah, there's a lot of weird trinkets here, so we'll skip to the end. Alright, and here we go on to a match number three. So this time you're against ABC123King2022, very interesting name, and even more of an interesting team. So now, um, this team's offensive capabilities are going to be put to the test. I actually can't remember what this team was called, I think it was called Bloodshed, I I really can't remember the name, but uh, it's, it's not going to matter too much. I mean, I don't think the name Bloodshed fits the team too well, I think... Uh, I think it has to do something with the doggy because the doggy is kind of like the main part of this team. And now we are going to be facing something that a lot of Mark teams have a really hard time against because, you know, there's Crusader with heals and Bulwark, there's Man at Arms for guards, there's Houndmaster for guards, there's Antiquarian for region. Like way back in the day, way back in the start of the Butcher Circus, this is what everyone was playing. And if you just didn't have Stabilizing Tiller, you'd lose. <laughs> That's kind of what was going on. But, okay, speaking more of uh, the team that Mr. D has created here, I do think it's a very powerful team, and there's some things that you have to do if you do want to take it out. Because you have to deal with the Houndmaster dodge, because he's just going to guard someone, you're going to have dodge. So you need to have either a lot of accuracy to stun the doggy, or you're going to need to have some kind of card break. You also need a way to deal with the flagellant, and you also need a good enough defense that uh, these three don't just kill you immediately. So yeah, that's something to watch out for. I think I'm going to start off with a Punish here, believe it or not. Now let's go for a Punish, see how we do. We are not going to get a Bleed out of it, but, you know, we get 6 damage. Eh, it's just, just fine sort of things, I suppose. There could be a block of Light right now, but it still won't do much, because as you can see, uh, yes, he's still at 30% protection, and, uh, well, he's going to go to 30 now, because we did debuff his Broth. I actually don't think the debuff is working, because um, the target whistle debuff does actually get bugged out, so I think he has 50% prod right now. We'll see in terms of the damage rolls, in terms of all you actually get. We'll see how much uh, he's gonna he's gonna have. I'm thinking of uh, going for some disruption right now. I think some disruption would be nice. I'm gonna go for a Polnus anti Crane, just so she doesn't drop a rejuvenating paper. So this is a really good thing about actually having two mark characters, is that you can pull the anti Crane to prevent regen and still have a mark to, to have synergy with. So let's see how much damage we actually do. So against this, uh, we should crit for 40 against 10% protection. Yeah, I think it actually worked okay. Yeah, I think it actually worked correctly. Well, it's not too shabby then. Um, yeah, the 30% protection doesn't really do anything against... Uh, well, it, it gives you 10% protection against the Piercing Coral, which of course isn't enough. 
Uh, normally a crit as the last character. Wow. Normally a crit as the last character firing with the Arbalest would do you 44. And with 10% protection, well, yeah, that's going to be cut off by a little bit. So very surprised to see a guard on the Antiquarian of all characters. Like, she's stealth, dude. <laughs> Why would you do that? Uh, why let your men at arms die this early? So, you know, defensive teams, they sometimes work, they sometimes don't. And it is good to see that uh, Mr. D's team has a lot of offense. Like, it has a lot of offense. You can negate 50% protection with this combo. Like, 50% protection right there and then. Target Whistle is such a good and so... Like, it's not even looked at most of the time. You don't see anyone playing Target Whistle. Only 135 J-Man with his Howlers team. Like, it's really the only other team I see making use of Target Whistle. And it's insane. You can hit. You can use it from any position to any position, like the Arbol's Mark for some bloody reason. And, um... Not only that, it has a 120% debuff base, which is more than what everyone else has. Everyone else only has 100, and Houndmaster gets 120, which is awesome. Totally awesome. We get a punish crit here on the Crusader. Don't get the bleed, sadly. It was a 50-50, and uh, if we did hit that 50-50, Crusader would be going down to 0 HP right now. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want that to happen. Crusader at 0 HP is uh, is not a good thing, because once your front line is gone, your back line is going to be gone too soon enough. It's going to be regen right now. It's not going to do too much, so I, I have to make a decision right now. I have to make a call. Do I want to like get lucky and just try hitting it to the hound master despite the 62 dodge or do i want to maybe hit the corpse or maybe target whistle the crusader and then go for some disruption like that you know there's, there's a lot of things for me to think about i think what i'm actually going to go for is going to be a little weird but it's going to be what i want to go for i'm going to shoot uh, the man at our scorps just so i get it out of here and then i'm going to mark the crusader after his action so i get the mark for four rounds and the debuff for four rounds yeah not only that but the minus 30 prot debuff lasts for four rounds same thing with the mark uh, they both last for four while the mark for death debuff on the bounty hunter only lasts for three and the call the shot or sniper's mark debuff on the arbles only lasts for two they never use this ability it's so garbage it's so freaking garbage i i hate it with, with a passion i really do i'm gonna pull this crew i mean i'm gonna mark this crusader right now and i'm gonna take it from there i can hit him with hounds rush i sadly can't hit him with sniper shot as of uh, as of right now but if I do pull the anti the Houndmaster, I will be able to hit him with Sniper Shot. I'm not sure if I'm going to go for that, but it is an idea. It's definitely an idea. It's going to be another Rejuvenating Vapors. I'm going to take this opportunity to just go for a Punish. That's going to completely counter the regen if we do apply it. So it's a 50-50 chance of getting the bleed, and sadly we don't get it. Despite getting the crit and then getting the crit buff, we don't apply a single bleed on the Crusader. So yeah, it's base 70% resistance. Is coming in very, very clutch for ABC King here. Uh, there's going to be another guard dog, so that's going to be even more dodge. No, he's actually going to lose some of that dodge. Yeah, he's going to lose some of it. What's my hit chance on the come hitter? It should be decent. Well, it's 95 over here, so 128 accuracy. Ah, we hit it. We hit it, thankfully. It's like a 70 of getting it. I just don't want to start shooting into a Houndmaster with 62 dodge and regen. And then lose the match from there, because if I miss like two sniper shots on the doggy, there might just be enough counter pressure that I start losing, and I don't want to see that happen. So now we... do we want to go last is a question. I might actually go for a Hound's Rush here. First, do we do enough damage with a crit? No, we don't. <laughs> we really don't. Then I might go for... I might go for an actual guard here on the Bounty Hunter, because he's getting dangerously close to zero and dangerously close to afflicted. We don't want to let him get afflicted. Of course, Flagellant doesn't care too much, because then he's just going to go redeem and whatever. But I'm going to go for... Oh, a sniper shot there for 52. Yeah, keep in mind, the Arbals is so balanced that the more damage you do, the more damage you do. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you're lucky enough to get a crit, you're going to do even more damage the next round. Only against smart characters, but, you know, still more damage. It's always wonderful, so... Definitely a good play here by ABC to just click the Crusader, you know, no pressure, he knows he knows what he's doing, he went for that immediately. I think that his first play of trying to go for a guard with the Man at Arms was very unnecessary, because even with guard and Borg of Light, like, I just don't care. The Man at Arms had exotic snuff, and I think, uh, I think a debuff trinket. You should have gone Bell immediately, because then you would have actually reduced my damage. 
the the doggy and Arbol Studio just don't care about your protection. You only even with the guard for 30% prot and the block of light for another 20, you still only had 10 prot. It just doesn't do anything. I think I want to keep my Arbol stack action. No, I don't think. I'm sure I want to keep my Arbol stack action. So I'm going to go for a Hounds Rush here. Also, keep in mind you have a 93% hit chance each time against 5 dodge. Uh, against 5 dodge characters. So you're definitely going to see that miss like once every couple matches with this, uh, with the doggy in this team. It's definitely a, a game breaker if that happens. Not in this situation, it would be the underworld, I just go sniper shot finish him. But if you're playing like Mark versus Mark and you have two very competent teams, it's gonna be game over right there and then. Which, you know, obviously isn't great. It's actually gonna be an invigorating vapors. Oh, you sweet summer child. You do not want to do that. So, Thing is invigorating vapors is a trash ability you're better off just going festering and start applying counter pressure get characters to their store and reduce their dodge that way so this character is still marked 72 dodge finally gets a dodge out of it 50 50 hit chance by the way i i could have uh, i could have gotten it but sadly i don't i think he's gonna click first here with the doggy and maybe just go for another guard or something I mean, if you click first, you get to, you get to lose. I mean, you lose your region. Jesus, my English. You do lose your region, but at least you'll get rid of the mark. Well, he doesn't decide to do that. Uh, I need to break that guard somehow. This is kind of the problem. I don't have stuns. I don't have guard breaks on this team. Hmm. How do I break that guard? Uh, I could put the two characters in position one. That won't really do me too too much. Uh, I could go for the immediate sniper shot and then go Hounds Rush finish him, but I mean they're probably gonna miss. Well, I'll, I'll try anyway, I'll try anyway. Let's go for this. Yeah, it, it misses. <laughs> of course, I should have guessed. Yeah, we're just gonna have to deal with this dodge somehow. So this is the problem with this team is that if you do run against, you know, yourself, <laughs> basically, you are not gonna have a good time against uh, against this crazy amount of dodge, for sure. And regen too, yeah, there just isn't too much of a way for me to break through that. But I have to, I have to break through that, and how will I do it is the question. I have plus bleed skill chance, I mean, I just have to hit. Just hit, right? Clueless. I'm gonna drop the caltrips here, just to start countering some of that regen, I guess. And I'm gonna figure out a way to actually hit this doggy, so... I'm going into damage prevention mode right now, and what that means is I'm gonna make sure that my bounty hunter doesn't get a flick, that doesn't drop to their store, make sure that he's safe while the doggy still has some very decent dodge, and make sure that, you know, the flagellant is always safe, he's a flagellant, he doesn't mind taking taking some punishment, and if I can keep it from in there, eventually this doggy is going to crumble, because that corpse is gonna go away, so regen is gonna be gone very soon, and after that, you're still gonna have dodge, but I will eventually hit, because all my characters have decently high accuracy, that I will eventually get a hit or two. Yeah, definitely... Oh no, that's invigorating, that's a mistake. Yeah, you're gonna lose your regen now, because I'm definitely gonna shoot that corpse, like, no questions about it. I might actually go punish on the corpse, yeah, I will go punish on the corpse. It's probably gonna do enough, since I just got plus 7 crit and plus 20 damage. Let's see, 6 to 13, yeah, we get the max roll, awesome. So the corpse is, oh, just barely going to disappear, and after that you're going to have no more regen, and I'll make sure the Houndmaster stays in position 1 so he doesn't get to use Lick Wounds. So it's going to be difficult to clutch this game out, uh, especially if some afflictions start drawing in, but can, can you just imagine if ABC had just gone a little bit more offensive earlier and started getting some afflictions, and, you know, if the team didn't have Flagellant and, and Doggy for the guard, where I basically take no stress. Yeah, can you just imagine both those things? So there's 82 dodge here, yeah, I don't really know how to deal with that, but I'm just gonna drop another guard dog, and then I'm gonna go like I I don't know, maybe come hit or something. Uh, maybe just drop the debuff so we reduce his uh, death flow resistance or something. The mark actually missed. I think that's the same sound as the uppercut when it misses. Interesting, right? This is a 40% hit chance. You know, 40 to hit, one shot. <laughs> oh, marvelous! never changed. Look at that 82 dodge, where is it now? Don't have a single accuracy buff, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't really rely on the doggy to dodge to win your match. We do have a dodge doggy here, but you only want to use him... I mean, you definitely want to use him, but don't think that just because you have a dodge doggy with like 62 or 82 dodge, 
that you're just gonna dodge everything infinitely because that's definitely not what's gonna happen. It's gonna be festering vapors here. You're getting misses out of that too. I mean, this uh, Cinti Grand was prepared for for danger. She she has the tears of the loss and black diamond mirror, but that also means no accuracy. So yeah, what can you do? I am going to be out of this store here, I now have the finisher accuracy as well, the grappling mid, so I have a 36. Eventually I'm going to hit it, believe it or not, eventually I am going to get that hit, and uh, the doggy will be dead meat. He has to keep spamming guard dog or he's not going to, or he's going to lose his dodge and then he's definitely dead meat. He's down to 72 already, he lost one of the buffs that he had I think, and right now I have 3 chances of getting the hit, so 43, we fail it, obviously. We're gonna go for another one. We're gonna go for a 26. We miss as well. Okay, are we gonna get the quadra miss? Come on, give me the quadra miss. I wanna see it happen. And no, just Arbos thinks. <laughs> she gets another hit and gets a crit out of it too. And that's gonna be GG. So I think a huge mistake I could have done would be to, instead of focusing down the Crusader, uh, just to start shooting the doggy immediately because then you could have seen like the quadra miss and with the crusader spamming zealous like the the, the bounty hunter maybe wouldn't be guarded like we'd be in a rough spot really really really, really rough spot and you do not want to be in a rough spot do you i'm just gonna go exsanguinate here it might miss which it does oh that's oh that's so annoying it does miss which means that the flashlight might die but i don't really care as long as the bounty hunter stays alive we're just gonna go mark for death we're gonna go hound's rush which has a major advantage over the arbalist sniper shot because um you know hound's rush can actually hit position one so we have a chance of hitting the senti Cryon. now unlike the the Arbol Sniper Shot, we have minus 20 accuracy, but we do get the hit. We also can't deal with that protection. There is no trinket for the Houndmaster to deal with that protection, but... Yeah, I would let this flash on tie, but I literally don't have anything else to do with the Arbol, so I'm just gonna go for a heal. I'm sorry, ABC, I know you wanted to get a kill, but I'm not gonna give it to you, because you should have surrendered once that Antiquarian... Uh, once, once the Houndmaster was gone, was the point of surrender, because you can't get an affliction here. It's gonna take ages for this bounty hunter to get afflicted. You can see right now he's taking... Oh, he's taking 8 stress. Oh, it's because I, I forgot to guard. Yeah. If, if the buff was applied, minus 70% stress taken, definitely uh, it, it would have been bigger. Uh, it would if they, You would have taken like only 2 stress, and yeah, 2 stress, who, who cares. So now we are going to get the crit out of the Houndmaster, and we are going to get the death blow with the Bounty Hunter. Hopefully, hopefully there's a chance we don't, 90, but we do take it. So GG to ABC, hope you all enjoy the team. I'm going to... Um, go over just like what kind of teams could counter this. So Shep Stress has kind of, kind of a bad time against it because uh, the the protection on any of my characters doesn't really matter. The dodge I do have on the doggy doesn't really matter that much because, you know, uh, Arbalist on their own and these accuracy trinkets make it so the dodge on the doggy doesn't really do all that much. And he can focus down one character like per turn, kill one character per turn essentially. So Shep Stress is not easiest way to deal with this. You do have a way of dealing with the flash on. it's like a maybe it's slightly losing for Chef Stress I'd say. Now against WD it's kind of um, a hit or miss, literally hit or miss because of this dog. He's gonna have a lot of dodge, it's gonna be the most difficult thing to deal with. But even though you can't stun him, you do have the Abomination which can just transform, go for a slam and break the guard. So you can potentially take down the Bounty Hunter earlier and that's definitely what you want to do. You want to take out the Bounty Hunter early and even if there's a mark with the, like if, if WD gets to go first, WD will go mark for death on the BH, then there's probably going to be a guard. There might be a pull, but after a pull there's Holy Lance and uh, that's going to be a Holy Lance on the Bounty Hunter. So that's a lot of damage against... Um, against uh, Mr. D's team. And after that, even if there's a guard, you can shoot through the guard, then there's gonna be slam. The slam's gonna apply a can't be guard the debuff for two rounds. Even if it misses, it's gonna break the guard, which is very unlikely for it to miss, but oh well. It can do that, and then the bounty hunter's probably gonna go to the back, which is gonna make it a little more difficult for WD to get the kill, but it, it will get the kill eventually between these two characters. And after that happens, it's gonna be rough. But, actually, if you do go for the mark first, Flashlight can go suffer. So if the flashlight goes suffer, you will no longer have a mark on this on this bounty hunter, and then you can go for a slam on the flashlight, shoot the flashlight, then you can kill him next round. Potentially, potentially you can kill him next round. There's still a heal. The flashlight can go redeem by the start next round, uh, potentially. But then you can just shoot him again. So it, it can go a lot of ways. It can definitely go a lot of ways. But who goes first is definitely gonna have the advantage. So I'm gonna say WD probably a good team to play against this. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Halo Comp's gonna have a bad time. 
especially against those cards. I think Helicomp's gonna have a bad time. I mean, you're gonna have accuracy to deal with the doggy, but the, uh, the Crusader might fail the stuns on the Flashbot. If he doesn't fail the stuns, then yeah, it's gonna be really difficult for Mr. D's team to deal with Halo. But I think it's pretty much a 50-50 matchup. Whoever goes first is gonna have an easier time, basically. Yeah. So anyway, hope y'all enjoyed the team, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.